step into the world of a classic film that peeks behind the curtains of 1950s Hollywood. Directed by Billy Wilder, it's a journey into a realm where faded stars and twisted ambitions collide. Get ready for a ride filled with emotions from humor to shock to sadness. Ever thought about the little-known stories surrounding this famous movie? The tales behind the scenes might just amaze you. And when it comes to surprises, which old Hollywood actor stands out for you? Share your favorite performances in the comments. As we explore Sunset BLVD, it's hard not to think about the personal connections viewers have with it. What's your fondest memory or personal tale tied to the film? Share your stories below. Ready to dive into the heart of Hollywood's darker side? Stay tuned for more insights about the movie that keeps us hooked. Sunset Boulevard is an amazing movie that should definitely be on anyone's list of top favorites. The story grabs your attention right from the start with a shocking scene of a dead person in a pool who turns out to be the one telling the story. Then it goes back in time to show how everything led up to that moment. The acting by William Holden, Gloria Swanson, and Erich von Stroheim is fantastic, and the way the story is written and directed is really well done. There's also a great performance by Jack Webb in a supporting role. The movie is about a former movie star who can't let go of her past fame, and it pokes fun at how Hollywood is obsessed with being famous and rich. The director, Billy Wilder, did a great job keeping the movie moving along, and the music by Franz Waxman adds to the spooky atmosphere. The black and white look of the movie, as well as the sets and costumes, make it even more interesting to watch. To sum it up, Sunset Boulevard is a dark and clever movie that you shouldn't miss. It shows how talented the people behind it are and stands out in the world of movies. Sunset BLVD is a significant part of American cinema history. In 1998, it was ranked as the 12th greatest American film by the American Film Institute. The director, Billy Wilder, chose a newcomer, Nancy Olson, to play Betty Schieffer in the movie. This was Olson's third film role, and she brought freshness to the character. The studio behind the film, Paramount, was enthusiastic and allowed the movie to showcase its premises openly. During production, there was excitement on the studio lot, with daily footage viewings becoming a popular event. The movie's impact is long-lasting and is considered a timeless classic in cinematic history. Buster Keaton, a co-star in Sunset BLVD, passed away on the same day as Hedda Hopper, who also appeared in the film. The California license plate on Gillis Plymouth 4DR 116 seems to be from 1949. A radio adaptation of the movie aired on September 17, 1951, on Lux Radio Theater, with Gloria Swanson and William Holden reprising their roles. In one memorable scene of Sunset BLVD, Gloria Swanson, portraying Norma, delivered a poignant performance on a staircase descent, moving the crew to applause and Swanson to tears. Although not the final scene shot, Billy Wilder, the director, celebrated her performance with a party. The parking lot behind Rudy Shushine, where Joe Gillis maneuvers his car, holds significance. It sits on 1751 Vine Street, close to Hollywood BLVD. This spot later became iconic, housing the Hollywood Walk of famed stars of Billy Wilder and Barbara Stanwyck. Stanwyck notably advocated for William Holden, who portrayed Joe in his career. Holden's portrayal left an imprint, as evidenced by the Canadian band Blue Rodeo's song Floating, referencing his character's desperation in the film. The lyric, I feel like William Holden floating in a pool, encapsulates the sentiment of the song, echoing the character's compromised existence in the movie. Sunset BLVB, a classic film featuring Gloria Swanson and Nancy Olson, saw them reunite in airport 1975, creating a connection spanning different eras. In a unique twist, Erich von Stroheim and Nancy Olson chose to wear their own clothes, adding a personal touch to their characters. One memorable scene features Max, played by von Stroheim, skillfully playing box toccata and fugue in D minor on the organ. This haunting musical moment has left a lasting impression on popular culture, possibly inspiring similar scenes like Lurch at the harpsichord in the Addams Family TV series. The film's attention to detail and commitment to authenticity went beyond wardrobe choices. The portrayal of characters and scene recreation have solidified Sunset BLVD as a timeless masterpiece. Swanson and Olsen, each bringing their unique charm to the screen, left a lasting impact on cinema. Sunset BLVD transcends its role as a film, becoming a cultural touchstone that continues to influence. 
the intertwining of narratives, powerful performances, and musical moments all contribute to its lasting appeal. This cinematic gem, featuring the incredible talents of its cast, stands as a testament to filmmaking artistry. In conclusion, the echoes of Sunset BLVD ripple through time, connecting eras and inspiring subsequent generations. The fusion of genuine wardrobe choices, captivating musical moments, and the brilliance of the cast make it a true masterpiece, leaving a lasting impression on film history. This narrative, shaped by the magic of the silver screen, captures the essence of a bygone era while continuing to engage audiences today. And so, the timeless tale of Sunset BLVD lives on, engraved into the annals of film history, a narrative. Sunset BLVD holds a prominent place in cinematic history, securing a spot on the American Film Institute's 1998 list of the top 100 greatest American movies. William Holden and Nancy Olsen starred in this film, marking the beginning of a collaboration that spanned four movies. Despite their chemistry on screen, they never shared another project. Interestingly, though not seen together in Sunset BLVD, Hedda Hopper and Buster Keaton had prior connections, having worked together in various capacities. Their paths crossed again on television in 1958. Fate brought them a common end as they both passed away on February 1, 1966, in Los Angeles. Their contributions to the entertainment industry remain significant to this day. Sunset BLVD is special in Hollywood history for a few reasons. It was the last big movie made using a certain type of film called nitrate stock, which Kodak stopped making in 1953. In one important part of the movie, Max gets a headpiece during a tango scene, and you can see on his face that he's worried about Norma's mental health. Also, Sunset BLVD is one of only a few movies to get nominations in all the big categories at the Academy Awards. Only 12 other movies like Mrs. Miniver, Johnny Belinda, and A Streetcar Named Desire got nominated for Best Film, Best Actor, Best Actress, Best Supporting Actor, Best Supporting Actress, and Best Director. These nominations show how important the movie is in cinema history, proving it's a classic. Sunset BLVD is notable for several connections with Hollywood's past. Cecil B. Demel, appearing as himself, previously directed H.B. Warner, known for his role in The King of Kings in 1927. Norma Desmond mentions spending $28,000 on her Isada Fraschini car back in 1929. Interestingly, Norma Shearer declined the role of Norma Desmond due to her reluctance to return from retirement and her dislike for the character's nature. These anecdotes add depth to the film's portrayal of Hollywood's golden age and its characters' backgrounds. Sunset BLVD, a classic released in 1950, underwent a significant restoration in 22, led by Barry Allen and Steve Elkin at Lowry Digital. The original negatives were lost, so they used 35mm interpositives from 1952, though these had deteriorated. The restoration involved a 2000-line resolution scan for a DVD reissue and a 4K scan in 2008 for its Blu-ray release. In the film, Norma, a main character, mentions working with Mabel Norman and Marie Prevost. However, this was fictional, as Gloria Swanson, who portrayed Norma, had never collaborated with Normand and had only worked with Prevost once in a 1916 short. Interestingly, the fee for renting the Jean Paul Getty mansion, featured prominently, was actually for Paramount to build the swimming pool, which became a memorable backdrop for various scenes. Despite restoration challenges and fictional elements, the movie remains a timeless piece of cinema, engaging audiences with its compelling narrative and memorable performances.